How do you scale up a one-on-one coaching program? I'm Chris Cooper. This is Business is Good. And today I'm going to tell you what is in between one-on-one mentorship and a big group coaching program. So in the past, there have been a few different models where people have delivered their mentorship or their coaching. And it started off mostly like one-on-one, like kind of like a personal trainer. You would have this mentor who would get on a call with you and work one-on-one. And this is actually how Two Brain Business was built. At the other end of the spectrum, you have these big group coaching programs. These are usually like lifestyle businesses for the mentor or the coach. They build themselves up to be an icon on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. They bring you into the program and you get on a massive group call. Now, there's pros and cons to both, obviously. It's tougher to scale a one-on-one mentorship practice because every mentor has to be thoroughly trained. There has to be ongoing training. If one mentor isn't doing a great job, that affects several clients, etc. On the other hand, the one-to-many approach has very high churn. Clients don't feel like anybody is taking a long-term view of what they're doing and they have trouble finding the access access to materials or figuring out like, how does this even apply to me? What sits in the middle is a mentor coach concierge model that a few clients in our meta program are now using with their business coaching practices. So here's the original model that we used. You'd have this mentor, okay, this person who had a lot of ideas, who published some material at Two Brain Business that was me to start with. Then you would have your clients And usually you'd have a growing pool, but the problem would be that there's only so many clients that one mentor could take. And then if you were smart, you would have somebody called like a CSM or a concierge. Okay. So I'm going to put CSM because that's what they're called at Two Brain. But this person's job is to be kind of the safety net for your program. So if somebody needs to find materials, they jump in. If somebody needs a welcome package, they jump in. If somebody is having troubles or dropping off or not showing up, this is where the CSM comes in. And traditionally, this role, concierge, uh, worked with the mentor to figure out like how to serve the clients best. But there's another method that is growing in popularity because it's so effective and that is the mentor coach concierge model. So in this model, the drawbacks of this one-on-one model are when you want to add more clients, like when this bubble gets filled, you have to add more mentors and more mentors. Okay. And, and, you know, of course, there's like a little game of telephone here. Our mentors at Two Brain are very highly trained. Um, they're certified. They have constant ongoing training. We constantly refine our materials and put them in their hands and, and give them previews in advance of everything. That's a lot of work. And for somebody who's just starting out, especially and looking to scale up to 3 million quickly, that might not be the model that you want. So here's an alternative model. This is the mentor coach model. So in this model, what you have here is a mentor still at the top. And this is kind of the figurehead person. This is the person who like sets the tone. Okay. So they determine the curriculum. They're probably the the icon that's in all the marketing. Uh, They're the person who might be like giving the big seminars or the speeches. They're the face in all the curriculum. Okay. But working with that mentor, you have coaches. Now a coach's job is to be a specialist. And I'll I'll get more specific here in a moment. Their job is to activate the client. So the mentor will work on the plan with the client and the coach's job is to make sure the client does it. And then down here, you have a concierge role. Okay, so I'm going to call that a CSM. Now, this is not a hierarchy. It's not that the mentor is smarter than the coaches or smarter than the CSM. It's just that their jobs are completely different. And I'm going to define what they each mean for you. So I'm going to put clients here. But right out of the gate, what you see is that the mentor can multiply how many clients are in their program without having to duplicate themselves. Here's how it works. This mentor will sit down with a client about once a quarter. Okay, so their delivery is quarterly in person. Anyway, they sit with the client. They create a plan for the next 90 days or the next six week sprint if you're using Simple Six or whatever your model is. From there, that plan goes to the client and it goes to the coach and it's the coach's job to activate the plan. So it's the coach's job to do whatever it takes to make sure that the client gets the desired outcome. They can pull resources. They can uh, call the client. They can book a Zoom meeting with them. They can send them a text. They can send them emails. They can say, this might help you. They can send them gifts, whatever it takes. Their job is the activator. After 90 days, 
their, the uh, results are tracked, the outcomes are achieved or not achieved, the coach gives the mentor a little bit of feedback, and then the client gets on the phone with the mentor and sets up another sprint. Now, what this does is it multiplies the number of clients that the one individual mentor can serve by about three because they're not on like a monthly scheduled call with everybody or even a bi-weekly one. They're really on a one-on-one -on -one call every quarter. That means they can serve at least three, maybe four times as many clients because the coach is helping them. Okay. So another way to think about this is what is the job of each person? Well, <clears throat> the job of the mentor is to be proactive. Okay. That means they are taking the long-term view of what the client's plans are, you know, where they're headed, what their perfect day is or whatever, working backward from that, what their goals are and what their overall path is. They are strategic. So while they might not say specifically, here's how to set up your Facebook ad, their job is to say, okay, we need to grow by 30 clients. Um, we've got these options. Facebook ads are the option that I think you should use. I want you to set yourself up with a course and get this done. And our goal is to have 30 clients in the next 90 days. Okay. The coach's job is to be active, not proactive, not reactive, but active. Their job is to get the client moving and doing the things. And so instead of being strategic, they're tactical. Okay. So they're going to get very specific. Here are the ads that you're going to use. Here is how you set up your Facebook campaign or your ads manager or whatever. Here is the dollar spend that you're going to put into this. Here's how we're going to track success. Okay. Let's look at your funnel. You know, so they're going to be very, uh, on top of the client. They're going to have frequent calls. They're going to have check-ins, maybe even daily to make sure that the client is activating. Okay. So their skill set is not lesser than the mentor. Their skill set is just different than the mentor. They have to activate the client. The CSM's job is to be reactive. When the client is not getting results, when the client is not showing up for calls or they stop responding to texts and emails, it's the CSM's job to jump in there and call them up. What's going on? How can I help you? The CSM might reassign the client to a different coach, for example, but they're going to stay with the same mentor. The CSM might send them a gift as a congratulations. They might send them the welcome. They might onboard the client or get the client like, oh, here's this thing that you need right now. The CSM's job is super duper important. And again, this is not a hierarchy of like, you know, first most important down to least important. That's not it. Everybody has a role to play. And eventually what you form is this gigantic circle of care where the clients are at the center. That's how you build a client centric business. Now, why is this so effective? There are a few reasons. First of all, you're not playing this game of telephone all the time when uh, the you know advice that a client is getting is different from mentor to mentor. There's one mentor really serving many, many clients and it's the coach's job to just activate that advice. Okay. Here's the tools and stuff. So you don't get that telephone game. The next thing that you don't get is you don't have to do like quality control on uh, another mentor. You don't have to watch their videos and say like, are they doing a good job or not? You can just look at the outcomes and you can say like, did this person get this done? If so, the coach did their job. Wonderful. Is this person sticking around? Did, were they uh, sent a congratulatory card when they had a baby? If so, CSM is doing their job. Like there are very clear KPIs that you can point to. And so this creates an outcome focused mentorship that you might struggle to define if you've got multiple mentors. Okay. So you don't have the, the QC problems nearly at all. You don't have the overwhelm problem. You know, a really common joke that we used to have at Two Brain, a, a new mentor would come in and they'd be like, how many clients should I have? And, and we would all say like, well, <laughs> you, you always want more until it's too many. And then it, you're like completely overwhelmed. And you take these clients and you fill your schedule and you think I'm good. And then you forget that you're going to be getting texts and calls at all hours. Can I get on a quick five minute call with you? That is not a problem when you've got these coaches because it's their job to handle that. Now, the mentor is still going to be present in the groups. They might answer questions. They might be creating a lot of content. They might be getting emails too, but it's really the coach's job to activate the client. Okay. And another reason this is so successful is you don't have to like sell uh, in pieces your service. Okay. So you don't have to sell like you get one call per month plus access to this and three Facebook posts a month or anything like that. All they have is everything they need, which is like unlimited access to the coach. They have a great 90 day plan built by their hero, the mentor, whatever, the icon of the program, the face, whatever, and somebody to help them activate it. Okay. That's really what they need. 
Okay, so now you're not selling in pieces anymore, you're selling the whole. And finally, uh, how this really helps a business scale is something that's called contribution margin. Now, contribution margin might be a foreign term to some of you. It's an accounting term, and it's basically your ROI on staff. Okay, so contribution margin is your ROI, the return on investment that you make in your staff. Okay, let's look at how this plays out. So contribution margin is the multiple that you would get back on somebody's time. So for example, if you're paying a certain dollar amount to a mentor, how much money are you getting back against that? You know, if you're paying the mentor a dollar, are you collecting $3 in client fees? Okay. And that contribution margin is going to change because different levels here will serve different amounts of people. Okay. So for example, uh, contribution margin on your primary staff should usually be over four. So you pay them a dollar for every four you collect. Overall, in your entire business, your contribution margin target is three to 3.5 contribution margin. There are going to be some roles in your business that don't generate revenue, but the mentors and the coaches do. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're looking for here is a labor efficiency ratio or contribution margin of about four on a mentor, but it can be much higher on a coach. So it might actually be like 12 on a coach and it could be as high as 24 on a CSM. So what that means is this, if a client is paying you a hundred dollars a month, then the mentor is probably making about 25. It means that a coach is probably making much less than that. Okay. So obviously you're going to be charging a lot more than, than a hundred bucks a month. In fact, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say a thousand. Sorry, Mike, I'm going to change that. Okay. So let's say that you're charging your clients a thousand dollars a month, just to make the math easy. <clears throat> what that means is that a coach can be paid about $250 a month, right? So like for every dollar you invest in the coach, you should be getting about $4 back mm -hmm. or in the mentor. Uh, in the coach should be making about a 12th of that. So that means that if you're charging the client a thousand bucks a month, the coach should probably be getting paid about 85 per hour. And what that means is that the CSM could be getting paid, you know, about 45 per hour. Okay. Now let's look at that in actual dollars. Because if you present these numbers to your staff, they're not going to like the, the ratios, right? But here's the reality. You brought the client in, you created the curriculum, the courses, the community, everything, the opportunity for the coaches. If you just look at this in mere dollars and you say like, okay, mentor, I'm going to pay you $250 to sit with a client for an hour on Zoom and map out their next 90 days for them. It's going to be a very interesting, very appealing job at a very high income. If you say to a coach, okay, I'm going to give you $85 per client per month to activate them, to get on a call if they need it, to check in, you know, once a week through text, to check in on email, to pick up the phone and call them, make sure they're getting their results. Hey, that's actually fantastic, right? Because each of these could have 50 clients and that's a great income. If you're looking at your CSM role and your CSM can take a lot of clients, if you're dedicating about $45 per client per month to retention and CSM pay, then that CSM can actually make a pretty good wage too. And you're going to have money left over to buy goods and treats and cards and all that kind of stuff too. Okay. There's other ways to do this. Of course, if you don't have any other labor, no other fixed costs, you know, you're under a million or even like under 2 million, you can probably bring this contribution margin down a little bit, pay the coaches a bigger slice of what you're taking, of what you're charging your clients. What you have to remember though, is that as you scale, you're going to need this management layer. And the management layer is going to include admin, accounts receivable, payable, possibly like a COO, super valuable people, but they don't drive revenue, right? They are, um, I hesitate to call them expenses, but they're not actually building contribution margin. So you have to balance it out with other people. Anyway, we can, we'll talk more um, about contribution margin, but my point here is that you can have a bunch of coaches getting your clients amazing results and you don't have to pay them as much. So you keep a good margin. They have a lot of fun at their jobs. They are specialists. Some of them might eventually ascend to become mentors if they want to, but if not, um, they're just going to be really great. And they're going to have a lot of time flexibility too, where the mentor is kind of like scheduled. Like they have calls at Monday at nine o'clock at an appointment at 10 o'clock, an appointment at 11, the coach can be a lot more flexible. They can text a client in the morning. How's it going? Are you making progress? Do you need to get on a call? I'm free at nine. I'll call you then. You know, it's, it's a fantastic job. It's a great opportunity all the way around. The CSM or concierge role also has amazing flexibility too. And it's a great investment because sometimes they will get a testimonial or they'll save a client who might've canceled or the 
the client will say something to the CSM that they wouldn't have said to the mentor or even the coach. This is just one way that you can scale a one-on-one mentorship practice without trying to duplicate yourself over and over and without going to the huge high churn group only, you know, low pay model. This is a great middle ground that some people in Meta are using right now and you can use it too. Hope it helps. I'm Chris Cooper. This is Business is Good. And if this helps, you can go to businessisgood.com and join our free community for entrepreneurs and business coaches there. <laughs>